Hi. So this is a Confidence on Camera seminar, day two. Today we're talking about confidence. Yesterday we talked about frame, what the camera sees. I don't know if you can tell, but I have taken my own advice and set up at home. Yesterday I was in the studio, which is why I had that fabulous ultra blue wall. And today I am across from a window with my camera elevated. You know, now, really, if you're gonna get really picky, you would say that this camera is slightly below where I am, so it's shooting up on me. So you can see up my nose just a little bit, uh, which is less than ideal. I see that Carter is still wearing his hood from yesterday. Uh, all right, there's Mia. Yeah, uh, the, and so I wanna start by talking about this whole idea of confidence. I'm gonna mute it for now. So just like yesterday, we're going to start with the lecture part of things, you know, building this idea of lecture online and then practice in class or rehearsal in class. Confidence is the very first thing that a camera sees. You know, and I've got backup from multiple casting directors. Uh, it's almost always what they will say in when they come in to do workshops at the studio is that the first thing the camera sees, the most important thing the camera sees is confidence. Now, what they don't specify is what that means, or what, they, uh, what they mean by confidence. And so I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, you know, and it's definitely something that I can see when I see people working. And I want to give you my best understanding of what comes across on camera as confidence, because that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about does your work come across on camera as confident to casting directors, uh, to the producers or directors who might be watching the tape. When you first walk in the room, do you come across as confident? And so my best thinking is that ease is what comes across on camera as confidence. You know, so if you are uh, nice and relaxed in your body, if you're not <laughs> super keyed up, if you can go in with ease in your body, then that's going to come across as confidence, All right? If I walk into this room and you can see that I'm trying a little bit too hard to, um, hi everybody, and I'm really trying to impress all of you and, oh God, and then really what's under that, you know, is uh, this mix of excitement and fear, you know, or, or excitement and worry. And what I need to be able to do is breathe so I can notice whatever I'm feeling. Now, I think that being a certain level of excited is important when you're going into an audition. The, there's something called a stress performance curve uh, that you'll see in sports psychology, which is like up to a certain point, being more escalated or more adrenalized improves your performance. So professional basketball players, professional football players, they talk about this. You know, what is your optimum level of stress? You know, the, or sometimes called the stress. And I'm getting technical. I can't help myself. Uh, the idea is you want a certain level of excitement. There's a reason that before playing in a professional sports game, or at least immediately before in the locker room, you don't have uh, professional athletes sitting around going like, okay, let's just breathe and just like find a still place and be completely calm and relaxed, right? You want a certain amount of adrenaline, but the trick is to manage it so that you can still notice what's going on, right? Because uh, up to a point, more excitement makes your performance better, more interesting, more alive. There's more going on inside your heart rate's going. And then you pass that high point on the curve. And then the more stressed you get, the worse your performance gets. And then it, and it drops uh, quite sharply. You know, as there's a point at which you are so excited or so nervous you know, that your performance gets substantially worse. You know, so, for, uh, so the first thing that confidence looks like is finding that per somewhere in that early part of the curve, right? So where you either have no stress or just enough stress to make your performance better, finding ease in your body. You know, and so what that looks like is you are breathing. You can feel your feet on the ground. Uh, my friend uh, Olivia Cheng, uh, who's a fantastic actor, she is on, uh, what's she on right now? Uh, HBO, gosh, what's, what's the name of that show that she's working on? She was one of the leads on uh, Marco Polo on uh, Netflix for a while, you know, and now she's working on 
oh, some San Francisco Chinatown HBO show that I have not watched. So hopefully she never sees this. Uh, anyway, um, Olivia would say that she, if she remembered what the reader was wearing when she left an audition, then she knew that she did a good job. Does that make sense? You know, that part of her check for herself, you know, was after she walked out of the audition room, the reader is the other actor who stands there beside the camera to read all the other lines. Did she remember enough? Was she actually breathing and seeing what was happening in the room enough that she remembered what the other person was wearing? Because if she was, because what happens is, you know, up to a certain point, right? You, you're building, you're building up to a certain point that extra adrenaline or that excitement or that nervousness actually makes you pay better attention, makes you notice more details. But what happens if you cross that point, then all, all you notice is yourself you know, and you stop noticing what's out there. And in order to, be, to do good acting, you have to be able to notice what's out there. And so that's the level of ease that's going to come across as confidence. You know, now, then there's some physical things that go along with confidence, you know, which is being able to look people in the eye, make clear eye contact, you know, and to speak clearly. Yeah, and those are things that we're practicing in acting class all the time anyway. You know, you are practicing looking your reader in the eye, you're practicing keeping, when we're doing the online classes, we're practicing maintaining clear eye lines. You know, that if I'm talking to you now, and even just talking to you, and I keep flicking my eyes around, even if, I don't know, there's just something going on here on my screen that I'm watching and I'm trying to talk to you at the same time, it looks nervous. It's going to look nervous, and the same is true in auditions. Typically, uh, if you're going in for an in-person audition, they'll make a decision about how confident you are as a person in the first mm, five seconds after you walk in the door. Yeah, and so it's important when you go into an in-person audition to walk in the door, make eye contact with them, uh, and say hello. You know, the com uh, so the very first thing they see is, oh, this person wants to be here and they can see me and they're paying attention to me. You know, something that uh, we're gonna get into a little bit later, but uh, that came up in my, uh, the classes this last semester in a way that you might find useful, you know, is this idea that every single person in the casting process, uh, including you, you know, is, has fear. Every piece of it has fear, right? So, uh, oh, let me see if, uh, I'm going to unmute Carter. Carter, do you remember, uh, let's go, uh, uh, do you remember in the Spring Break Intensive last week, you know, I talked about the different steps. You know, what's the producer in charge of? Um, the producer is in charge of making the movie, the, the movie and the money. They're in charge of the money, exactly. They're in charge of the movie, the money. A producer is the money person who's in charge of those things. But they, they hire everybody, including the director. The director's in charge of what? Um, uh, the, the cast. They're in charge of the story. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the next step is the casting director. What's the casting director in charge of? Um... They're in charge of the auditions. Auditions, exactly. They decide who gets to audition and then they run all the auditions. That's their job. That's their total focus. The next step is the talent agent. The talent agent is, is in charge of what, Carter? Um, the actors. actors. Exactly. They're in charge of helping them get work and saying like, hey, casting director, I see that you're casting this thing. You know, my actor would love to audition for it. Please, please. You know, and then the actors are in charge of what? Themselves. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, the, so you, un, you all understand the process. We've got producers in charge of the money. They make all the final decisions. Directors in charge of the story. Casting directors in charge of the auditions. Uh, talent agent is in charge of the actors. Actors are in charge of themselves to the actors food chain. And it's something that's gonna come up later in the week. And so it's just really worth remembering because it helps you uh, remember who makes the final decisions when you're going uh, into an audition. Yeah, and whether that's a taped audition or a, um, or an in-person audition. Now let's say that this is in the next six months and uh, the, so the auditions are all likely to uh, be online, you know, or either like this sort of run uh, by Zoom or a similar service, you know, or you're gonna submit a tape. Now, if you were, if you were submitting tapes, you know, the um, person who, would be deciding who got to audition you know, and then receiving and watching all of those tapes would be who? Uh, 
casting director? Yeah, that's exactly, because they're in charge of the? Casting and auditions. They're completely in charge of the auditions. Good. Now, the, the folks who then the casting director would forward those tapes to and say, they'd say, yeah, you know, this guy, Michael Bean, mm, so-so, but there's these other people who I think are really great, or this guy, Michael Bean, like, he's my number one choice, but, you know, watch them all. Uh, so the people would be watching the tapes and then deciding who gets cast would be who? Not the casting director, it would be... The director? Yeah, Luca? The talent? Um... Nope, the, uh, right, so you've got the casting directors in terms of the auditions, the talent agents in terms of the actors, the actors in terms of themselves, you know, it's, yeah, Sophia. The producer? The producer, exactly. You know, so it's the uh, producer uh, that's going to be in charge of uh, deciding who gets cast. The producer and sometimes the director, right? So it's just really important to know how that works. Your talent agent doesn't decide who gets auditions. Your talent agent doesn't decide who books projects and gets to work in film and TV. Talent agent is just in charge of trying to get auditions for you. That's all they're trying to do all the time. If so the casting directors, those folks who are just in charge of the auditions here in the middle, you know, that's who uh, we've got coming and joining us on Friday. Yeah, and that's you know, why I'm going to encourage you to uh, keep joining us this week so that you can really be ready to ask your good questions and take advantage of that time with uh, Ms. Judy Lee. Uh, and you can look her up on IMDB uh, if you've got to, uh, I'm going to put that in the chat window right now. Probably already know about it anyway, but just so you've got it imdb.com, you know, and cast uh, Judy Lee casting. Uh, so you can look her up on imdb.com and see some of the movies that she's been casting in the last couple of years. She casts quite a lot. You know, I'm, I have known Judy for, oh my God, um, I think basically since I started the school. You know, so for uh, 18 years now. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, what looks and sounds like confidence. You know, so in, in the way that we normally use the word, it seems like confidence is a quality that's inside people. And so uh, that's the way we talk about it, but that's not really the way that it's witnessed. And so one of the things that I want to point out is that if if we're talking to somebody, like if you uh, meet somebody and you're talking to them, you know, and they come across to you as super confident, if you're like, wow, that seems like a super confident person, just the way they are as a person comes across to me as really confident. Um, but then you talk to them and they say, oh yeah, I'm a mess. You know, yeah, just total chaos in here. You know, lots of, I feel scared, I feel weird, feel really uncomfortable. If they come across as confident, then when they tell you what a mess they are, you know, how nervous they are or whatever, it act, that actually comes across as more confident. That comes across as part of their confidence. We're like, wow, they're so confident they can even talk about what a mess they are. Because like, you know, I'm a human, I know what it feels like to be a mess. You all with me so far? Okay. However, if we talk to somebody, you know, and they are having trouble getting their words out and they're not looking at us and um, they are judging the things that are coming out of their mouth and they're clearly really worried about it. Mostly what they're noticing is their own experience and they're not really seeing us, looking at us, taking us in. And then we say, mm, tell me like, how does it feel on the inside? And they say, oh, on the inside, it's super confident. I feel super confident. You know, then that's not confident behavior. That's not confidence. What we would typically humanly assume about that person is that they are completely out of touch with what's going on, that they are not able to notice, you know, the, uh, that, that lack of confidence. And so that tells me that confidence, despite the way that we talk about it, is mostly about behavior. You know, obviously there's an internal component to it, you know, that I think comes from that ability to manage your own stress level enough that you can really stay present and notice details and not be so far into it that you're just noticing you know, what's happening inside you. Okay, but, the, uh, but confidence looks like behavior and it's one of the reasons why fake it till you make it is really effective. 
is because what we consider confident typically comes from behavior. You know, so right now, because I can sort of see everybody, um, show me what the body language of like really not confident might look like. Right? If you if you were there and you were mostly like nervous and scared and kind of like freaking out, you know, and you didn't want to be there, you know, what would that look like in your face and in your shoulders, you know, in your body if you're standing or you're sitting, you know, what does that look like? Exact, right? So you see, so we got some people looking away. Um, we've got um, a via you know down at the bottom who's actually uh, like starting to disappear from camera. Like already she's in the very bottom of her frame. So via you missed the camera technique. Uh, lesson yesterday, so you should probably go and watch that on uh, YouTube. You know, it's on uh, or so it's on the Biz Studio Screen Acting YouTube channel, and you can find it posted on uh, Facebook.com/slash/BizStudio. Um, but one of the things that you're going to want to do, Avia, right now, you've got this big space over your head. You're going to want to adjust your camera down here so that we can see you, because hiding down here is one of those things that, as simple and silly as it is, is going to look like shy or nervous or scared, even though it's just about where your camera is adjusted, right? Where you're looking uh, affects people's, um, the story people make about your confidence level, the way that you speak, you know, eye contact especially, and body language, body posture, you know, body position. You know, so if you were going to, um, you know, so what does confident, you know, body posture look like? You know, not like cocky, like, you know, superhero, but just like confident body posture. Like I'm here, I'm breathing, I can feel my feet on the ground, I'm paying attention. Exactly, it looks like what most of you are doing anyway. And that makes sense. Of course you are at ease right now because you're at home, right? You've, uh, you were, uh, you know, looking at a computer, you know, but there's you're likely, the likelihood that there's fairly low stress level in your body. You know, and so the, um, let me unmute everybody. What are some of the other things that you uh, that you uh, think about as confident, right? In terms of like, what do you what do you see and hear? Or what does it feel like on the inside? What does confident behavior uh, look and sound like? Yeah, Luca. Um, like a strong posture. Okay, which means what? To you? Like um, sitting up tall and like kind of like ready, I guess. Mm hmm. Interesting. You know, the uh, anybody else want to weigh in? <laughs> Ooh, that was fun. Did you make that ding sound of you? No. <laughs> uh, yes. But, um, being able to talk clearly and make good eye contact. Yeah. Good. Great. You know the uh, what? Uh, uh, now that idea of like sort of managing the stress curve. You know, which is so important to confidence. You know, does everybody know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, where you're like, you're excited and it makes you better at the thing and then you get too excited or too scared and it all goes to heck. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm seeing some, like some little nods. You gotta help me out because I'm looking at everybody's faces now and sometimes if I talk and talk and you don't give me some kind of acknowledgement that I'm like, I wonder if they have any idea what I'm talking about there. So the... Uh, when you go too far, like when you're in that space of being uh, too nervous or too excited, you know, and um, it's worth saying that uh, those are the same body experience, uh, but with a, a different story about what's going on, right? So the like adrenaline response, which is, you know, fight, flight, uh, freeze, the uh, is sort of basic. I mean, this is, you know, I'm not an expert, you know, but what I have read about it is that like, this is left over, you know, from like a million years of, you know, running around in the wilderness, you know, and if something big with teeth jumps out, you know, then your body has to be ready to like punch it in the nose, run away, or hold really still so it doesn't eat you. And that's fight, flight, or freeze. You know, so typically, if you are doing an audition, you know, whether you're taping at home or you're doing an audition in person, the likelihood that you will punch somebody or physically run out of the room is very, very low. You with me? Right? What's most likely to come up for you is a freeze response. You know, and uh, has anybody, you know, uh, you can just raise your actual hand. Has anybody ever had those like little moments of freeze, you know, when you're trying to do a scene? Because I, I sure have. 
know, where you're saying a line and suddenly you're like, Dick, up. You know, so those are those little moments of freeze response. You know, and it happens when you are too nervous or too excited and you've tipped from being able to like think super clearly and sharply and notice everything that's going around uh, on around you to mostly just noticing your own experience. And so what is it, what do you know to do? If you are too nervous or too excited, you know, uh, the, what's something that has worked for you in the past to help calm yourself down? Mia. I count in to 10, take a deep breath. Mm, nice. You have, uh, and you've used that with, used that with, with sports or, with action or something else. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to mute everybody because I'm getting a little bit of extra noise. Uh, uh, Mia, the, you've used that count to 10 thing, you know, just like when you're mad at your brother or you've used it with sports or with school or right. If you're like nervous about something, like count to 10, take a deep breath. If you're mad at somebody, take it out like on a pillow or something else. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so good, so it's, it's the, like the nervous or excited bringing it down. Uh, Lincoln, thanks for waiting. You know, what's worked for you? Um, taking a couple deep breaths okay. or just talking. Interesting, uh, like talking to, like talking to a friend, talking to your mom, that kind of thing? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes uh, because we want to bring you back to uh, being able to notice everything that's going on, just interacting with another person can take the focus out of here and into out there. Uh, something that uh, I had recommended by a psychologist who came into uh, my class to talk about techniques for helping young actors you know, uh, deal with nerves, she called it square breathing. You know, but I've seen it uh, a couple of different places. There's a lot of support for this is one of the simplest tools, you know, which is the to slow down the breath by doing two seconds in, hold for two seconds, two seconds out, hold for two seconds, right? And some some of the places that I uh, I've read recommend longer ones. So, you know, four seconds in, hold for four, out for four. You know, but one of the things this does is it can slow your whole system down because deep breaths. Uh, happen to like activate the part of your body that just calms the whole system down. Yeah, and you don't want to go all the way to sleep, but that's not an issue if you are, you know, over your edge. What you want to do is, you know, see what's going to get you back to that happy medium. Um, anybody else? You know, what works for you when you are like more nervous or more excited? Does anybody here do sports? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Sophia. Those are that's so such excited hands. You know, so. Um, Sophia, what, uh, what's worked for you in the past? I doodle. You doodle? Yeah, and it, and it helps you calm down. Good. Like, I draw, like, people's pulses in hospitals and stuff like that. Interesting. Right, so if you were going into an in-person audition, having a sketch pad with you so that you could do some doodling might be useful. You, um, anybody else? You, now, a whole bunch of you said that you've done sports. Oh, me, you have, uh, um, I, yeah. Like, Fidget, like, have, like, a fidget tool or something, or, um, like, a putty thing, like, just to take out your energy. So. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, Alexa? Um, drinking water, because at dance competitions, I know, I'm not sure if that's really a sport, but, um, I do competitive dance, so, um, I get really nervous all the time, so if I drink water, it makes me, like like rehydrated and like more calm. Oh, great. Yeah, so the, uh, as you experiment, I think everybody will you'll find uh, the kind of tools that sort of help bring you back to that happy medium place. But just so you know, that's the goal. The goal you know, is some nervousness and excitement, enough to really help you notice what's going on outside of you. But if you start to get tunnel vision and be like, oh my God, all I can think about is that I don't know my lines or that I'm gonna forget or blah, you know, that's when it might be a good idea to pull out one of these tools and bring it back. Especially if you are getting ready to perform uh, or if you're getting ready to go into uh, an audition, you know, so that you can walk in the door being able to, like I said, breathe, notice people, make eye contact, speak clearly, all of those things. They, I'm gonna unmute everyone. Uh, any uh, more questions about confidence before we get into the like practice side of things? Okay, good, well, uh, let me find a short script. So uh, that was 
um, the, that was today's experiment. Uh, today's uh, the uh, confidence on camera uh, seminar on confidence. You know, tomorrow we will be talking about story and how to break down a story. The day after that, uh, Thursday, uh, we're going to be going over a whole bunch of little details, tips, and tricks. And Friday, we're going to have casting director Judy Lee joining us.